In this video, I want to talk a little bit about communication competence and how it relates to a small group environment. So, uh, what we mean by communication competence, first of all, is engaging in communication with others that is both effective and appropriate within a given context. And, and those are the two key terms we want to focus on first here, effective and appropriate. So, what do we mean by each of those things? So, the components of, of communication competence. First of all, effectiveness. How effective are you in this given context, in this particular situation or environment? How effective are you? Because that's going to that's gonna change from situation to situation. It's really a matter of degree. Uh, we can be deficient in some areas and, and some situations and, and more proficient in others. Um, the idea is to, of course, increase our proficiency of competence from situation to situation so that no matter what kind of situation we're in, whether it's, you know, a uh, an interpersonal situation or a small group situation or public public setting or whatever that are that are you know and no matter what culture and, and different variables like that are involved that our effectiveness would in, would continue to become more proficient our effectiveness would continue to increase so that we become more proficient in each of these situations we also need to think of effectiveness in terms of a we not me orientation Right? And, and especially in a small group setting, we want to be focused on the we and not the me. In, in westernized societies and in individualistic societies, we're going to talk about individualistic and collectivistic here in a second, but in, in individualistic societies, we tend to be more me-focused. We tend to be more focused on, on me as an individual, what are my needs, what am I searching for in this situation. In the group context, we really need to switch that to more of a we mindset because, uh, you know, together everybody... Uh, wins when uh, when it all works out for everybody. You want to work in a, in a collaboration there, uh, not so that some people are only getting part of what they want or none of what they want, but so that everybody's getting all of what they want in that situation. So in addition to effectiveness, we also need to think about appropriateness. Am I behaving and communicating in an appropriate manner in this situation? And, and by that we mean, as much as anything, are we abiding by the rules? Every situation is going to have rules or standards by which it's judged and and uh, and just things that we need to do or not do and say or not say and, and just we need to know what the situation is so that we can behave appropriately and according to the rules for that particular situation. When we fail to abide by the rules, when we violate those rules, then we're going to be in, viol so when we're in violation, we're going to suffer consequences. There are going to be consequences. Um, sometimes those consequences are, are minor, like people may look at us funny, or we may suffer some sort of small embarrassment or something, but and other times it may be more significant. We may be ex isolated or excluded from the group or, or suffer some you know financial consequences as a result of violating those rules. It just depends on the situation. It depends on the, the severity of the, of the violation and, and, uh, and, and you know, what the rules are for that and what the context is there. But, but when we violate rules, we're going to suffer some sort of consequence, whether that's strictly interpersonal and intrinsic or whether there's, there's some sort of extrinsic uh, consequence to that or, or explicit consequence. Uh, depends on the situation, but there's going to be a consequence when we violate the rules. Uh, we also need to be aware that rules change. Rules change not only from situation to situation. The rules are not going to be the same from one group to another, but the rules are going to change within groups at times too, uh, as groups grow and adapt. And you know, think of it in a large scale. We think about you know lots of private country clubs that at one point were you know allowed or allowed memberships and and allowed players to only be white males, for example. And those rules had to change with the times. They had to change and allow allow women and allow people of color to uh, to uh, and allow minorities to be a part of those uh, clubs and things. And, and the same is true with groups. Uh, uh, so uh, the rules are going to change in big ways and small ways, uh, and they're going to adapt over time and change over time. And we need to adapt and change with them if we're going to be competent communicators. So we need to communicate both effectively and appropriately for that given situation. We also need to keep in mind intercultural challenges, and specifically the one uh, that we're going to focus on for for this time is individualistic versus collectivistic, which I, I alluded to uh, a little bit a few minutes ago, but uh, individualistic versus collectivistic. Uh, so in individualistic cultures, there tends to be more of a focus on the individual, as you might imagine from the name. So individualistic cultures tend to focus on individual achievement, individual um, procurement, individual uh, elevation uh, of, of people. So uh, we tend to focus on the individual more and what does this mean for me? How does this impact me? Um, which is, has on the flip side, I mean, has, has its positives in the sense that uh, 
that's how we see more innovation and different things people trying to get ahead and people trying to to change their status uh, are more inclined to to work hard to do that and to, to be more innovative and and so we see lots of innovation coming from individualistic cultures and uh, as opposed to collectivistic cultures which tend to be more uh, focused on the the we on the on the on the, on the, the collective mindset what's good for this group what's good for my society what's good for my family focus on honor and responsibility and loyalty and those types of things uh, in cultures like that you see a lot of those cultures in the older parts of the world the older societies of the world so uh, you know in in africa the middle east uh, southeast asia those types of cultures south america tend to be very collectivistic cultures uh, as opposed to kind of the newer society so to speak relative to the the, the history of the world i guess the newer societies such as in, in europe and and north america in particular and the United States tend to be more individualistic cultures. So we need to be aware of those challenges and the, uh, what they may present in groups because people will approach group work differently and, and the expectations for groups differently and, and, and roles in groups differently when they're from different cultures. So we need to be aware that, uh, that there are those kinds of challenges as well, intercultural challenges. So those are components of culture. So, so what can we do, though, to achieve this communication competence that we've been talking about. What can we do to achieve this competence? Well, first of all, we need some knowledge. We need to be aware of the situation. We need to be aware of the rules. We need to know um, what's going on. We need, not only that, but we need to know ourselves. Um, so we need to understand uh, both internally and externally what are the factors at play here. What are the Again, what are the rules for this group? What are the rules in this culture? Um, and what are my expectations? What's my role in all of this? We need to be aware of all these things, and we need to have a, a solid knowledge of the situation and the context. We also need to have skills. You know, we need to have as many tools in our tool belt, so to speak, as we can. We need to uh, that we can employ in these different situations, and we can be adaptable in, in approaching these group situations. But we need to have a variety of different skills, not only. Uh, solid interpersonal skills, but a solid knowledge of group communication and maybe some public speaking skills and, and things like that. And, and we need to develop our skills for for empathy and, and uh, interpreting nonverbal communication and all these types of things. All these are tools that we can put in our communication tool belt, but we need to develop those skills um, so that we have them at our, at our disposal uh, for, for when we need them in these group contexts. We also need uh, some sensitivity. Sensitivity to the situation, sensitivity to the culture, sensitivity to others, so that we can, again, be more effective in reading nonverbal communication and doing things like that. Um, also, just, you know, an awareness of uh, the context, you know, knowing where you're at, knowing um, what style of communication, how assertive or aggressive can you be in this type of situation, what are we fighting for, what are the founding principles of this uh, situation. So uh, we need sensitivity to all those things. We need to, to be hyper aware of these things. We also need a commitment, a commitment both to improving our communication skills and a commitment to being a competent communicator. That requires effort, so it requires commitment on our part. And I would also say in the group context, a commitment to the group, a commitment to, to seeing that group function through and to being an effective and, and productive part of that group. And if you can't do that, then you need to find a way to excuse yourself from that group, to be quite honest. We also need to consider ethics. And there are a variety of things to consider within ethics, so um, some of those include uh, the, some of the factors to consider in ethics are honesty, res respect, excuse me, fairness, choice, and responsibility. So all of these things factor into ethics, but we need to be, you know, ethical communicators as well as all those other things. Uh, none of those things, knowledge and skills and sensitivity and commitment, are going to do us uh, any good or do our group any good if we don't have the ethics to go along with them. If we can't be honest with our group members, even when it's difficult, if we can't show respect to others. Again, that doesn't mean we have to like everyone or be best friends with everyone, but we do need to show those people respect and courtesy. We need to be fair to our group members and, and, and give them a fair chance. We need to give them choice. Nobody likes to be coerced. Nobody likes to be pushed around. And so part of ethics is, is making sure that everybody has a uh, fair choice when, whenever possible. And, and then responsibility, taking responsibility for our, our actions and for the group's actions and, and just behaving in a responsible manner. So uh, are a part of uh, being an ethical communicator as well. So all of these things go into to communication competence, and all of them are things that we need to be concerned with and aware of and, and be working to better as we uh, attempt to achieve communication competence, in, in this case in a group setting. 
If you have any questions about this content or anything else related to the to, to, to communication competence or, or small group communication, uh, please feel free to email me. I'd be happy to respond to any emails uh, with the, any uh, questions that you might have. So uh, any follow-up or, or further discussion, that would be great as well. Feel free to email me at any time. I appreciate it. In the meantime, happy communicating.